Welcome back to the garage, everybody. Working on the old blue willies again today. And uh, finally was able to, whoa, totally almost crashed. Anyways, finally able to get the gas tank uh, back underneath the Jeep. So because that gas tank is so big, it's about 20 gallons. It takes up a lot of space underneath the back of the Jeep. You do have to lift the back of the Jeep. Uh, I used two of my uh, taller jacks, of course, uh, one on each side of the bumper and then basically get it lifted up and then pull the um, shackle bolts out. And so um, I think you could do it at full droop with the bolts, but you would probably just scrape the heck out of the side of the gas tank and stuff like that. Um, so I decided to just, you just pull those bolts out and then you can slip the gas tank in from the back. Um, and then after a lot of fiddling and getting it aligned, uh, I was able to clamp it into into place um, temporarily uh, and then stick uh, the Jeep back on its own weight. So this is the first time the gas tank has actually been uh, holding itself up um, underneath the Jeep. Uh, it is just clamped at this point. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna go back through uh, probably once more and, and make some marks and notes and ad final adjustments on where the bolt holes for everything line up. But it's uh, close and it's under there and it fits. And so I'm super happy about that. Great way to finish off the week. Uh, it's Friday and this will probably go up today cause they're so short, but uh, here, I'll give you a tour. So um, here is the back of the old blue willies. And then here is the, the fuel tank. Um, it bolts onto this uh, flange, bolts to the bottom of the bumper. When I built this bumper, I put in um, uh, two three-eighths fasteners per side to hold up the back of the skid plate and those are just welded in uh, with blind threaded uh, bungs into the bumper um, so in order to mark the skid plate for the final alignment because I wasn't exactly sure where those holes were with everything and all the welding and moving of stuff um, so I ended up putting a just a three-eighths set screw in there uh, in each one of these holes and then I can go through a little bit of tape just to keep the minor scratches down. And then I will go through and um, hit these with a rubber mallet and mark all four positions um, carefully before I pull it back out again for the drilling of the final mounts. Um, but that's how that works. Um, you can see this area is kind of close here, um, but this shackle does have a, a stopper on it. You can see that right here and so that keeps it uh and the suspension from going too far forward and inverting um, it's kind of like a limiting strap um, but for leaf springs and so that stops this from getting into this and it only gets it gets within about a fingers width or so um, so that works out pretty well um, i am going to have to do some flush hardware i will uh, taper the spring clamps on this side counter bore them and put the fastener through this way and so this will be flush and, and keep this you know kind of healthy fingers width distance with the shackle um, pretty much same both sides all that um, and the fuel filler uh, neck worked out pretty good i don't know how good of a of a thing i can show you that uh, might be able to see it actually if I invert and then we were inverted uh, No Anyways, um, it it comes off the top of the tank. Oh wait, maybe I can't hear hold on. We're going inverted again uh, Yeah, there oh, oh You can see it right there and so uh, the filler neck is up Oh, sorry, filler neck is up in there um, and it goes off the top of the tank and this way and then goes over the frame rail here and then we'll go up into the filler neck, which will, oh, sorry, which will poke out here um, somewhere. Uh, tail lights will be going back in these locations, but yeah, so that worked out really well. Um, it is getting I'll kid you not, you know, I mean, I'm sure lots of you guys that are watching this that have all built, oh, there we go, get some light for you, have all built flat fenders, um, 
in the past or, you know, uh, are well aware of them or um, how small they are. It's just a different scale vehicle than I think people are used to these days. I mean, it is just a big go-kart. And so, um, you know, you get far enough along in these projects and it's it just gets tight. So um, you start running out of space, you start having to become more clever with your compromises and all that. So um, I'll show you here. Oh, actually, let's go to the other side. Maybe I can show you from there. Um, oh yeah, let's start there. So we're gonna have to go on a little expedition underneath here. So take it. Okay, so you can hopefully see the forward section of the tank here that goes up over the axle and forward um, almost to the there's enough room on the back here um, I could have made it longer but I did want to be able to drop the transfer case down slightly um, and be able to pull it um, off the back of the transmission so that's why I left some space here but other than that um, you can see how much space that utilizes and you can see our muffler over here and so right in here is where the drive shaft has to go still um, but it's actually not bad I mean that's I don't know you know eight oh eight sorry that's like eight or ten inches of of uh, room for the drive shaft so it's not super tight but it's definitely tight enough so it is also above the bottom of the frame here there'll be a skid plate of course that goes uh, a belly pan on the side of the frame um, so you don't have to worry about hitting this part this part's fairly protected by the springs and all that um, and is up out of the way you can see one of the mounts up there that just kind of temporarily shimmed in place that goes up to one of the cross members there and then there's another mount here that needs shimmed and will go into the hat channel um, of the body so it looks like i got to do about a half inch 3 8 shim in that one and then there is another one um, over we'll go out we'll go out look at that over there um, but anyways you can see this forward section of the tank and then for those oh hold on let's get out here we'll go to the other side okay so um, I get a lot of questions on how I'm going to move the fuel from the front section of the tank to the rear and so I took a, um, a fairly OEM approach to that and this isn't uncommon in um, cars especially to have what's called a saddle tank so not a separate tank but a tank with two sumps and so uh, to go for instance, over a differential, over uh, things like that. I think they were very popular, uh, like Corvettes had them, uh, newer Corvettes, uh, Subarus, things like that. And so what they do is they have a, um, what's called a Venturi pump. Um, so it is a non-electric, it is a, a pump that works just off the flow of fuel in the return line. And then that goes through a Venturi and sucks fuel through a third leg or a second sump uh, and continuously moves fuel from the saddle to the main tank and then that fuel feeds the uh, fuel pump and so basically the tank is just always continuously moving fuel from the front to the rear section um, and then that eventually you know gets 90 percent of the fuel from the uh, front section of the tank to the rear um, and then you know lets the lets it run as, as low as it's going to go um, in theory uh, that is from all the OEM stuff that I could find that's um, it, it's it's better than anything you're going to get with a normal pickup system um, it it really does a good job because it just picks up fuel whenever fuel is present um, and, and then goes uh, to the rear section of the tank. So that non-mechanical, no second pump needed, no transfer switches needed. Um, the Venturi never, you know, wears out per se. 
um, and it's just powered by the, the, the electric fuel pump for the fuel injection, essentially. Um, you could probably actually do it with a, with a mechanical pump um, on the engine if it had enough flow, uh, like with a return style fuel filter, if you wanted to try and do it on a carbureted vehicle. Um, I don't know if I'll have to dig into that a little bit, but I think that would be possible. So anyways, um, yeah, tank is back under the old blue willies. Oh, I didn't show you that last, uh, that last connection point. So there's one more mount that's over here. Now I'm probably going to have to take you guys inverted again. And, uh, so there is one more mount. Oh, no, we made it, uh, right here. You can see that that goes to the bottom of the frame. And again, this just gets a cut to fit shim um, so that you can adjust the tension on it. I didn't want to try and guess exactly where that point was going to be. So shim, um, this one will probably have it welded to the bottom of the frame and threaded and then a hole through the frame for the bolt to go through. Um, but that's the, the other fastener on the, the front section of the tank. So that kind of sums up how all that fits in there and how it works and everything. I'm super happy to get it all in there and uh, have it all fit and uh, able to bounce on the, on the suspension um, and check clearances and all that stuff. Uh, and now I can move on to getting the, the fuel filler neck uh, made and the final um, brackets or I guess spacers for the brackets, whatever, the final mounts, and then that is done. So just got to plumb it. Um, the fuel pump mount is is under this cover, um, so you don't have to pull the tank out to put a, a fuel pump in it. Fuel pump is just a standard GM uh, uh, electric fuel pump assembly with the swirl pot on the bottom. Um, I find those to be the best for uh, being able to scavenge fuel out of the bottom of the tank. They have a little one-way valve in the bottom and how they do everything like the swirl tosses the air out of the, of that it gathers in the fuel. Um, and, and that's all uh, really good. This one I do think was a car version of the pump. Um, they're basically just different heights and this tank is, is pretty uh, uh, shallow uh, top to bottom. And so uh, I think a car pump was the best fit uh, there, but other than that, it makes it easy to get a, a pump pretty much anywhere at AutoZone along the way during your adventures, things like that. And so, um, yeah, happy day. Good Friday. Uh, thanks for following along and crazy stuff I'm building in my garage. And, uh, thanks for, you know, ordering merch and all the things that come with having a YouTube channel these days. Um, you can, you know, do any of that or check out any of the products that I have, um, you know, like the taller jack and things like that at uh, brennans-garage.com. If you have any questions, drop a comment below um, or drop an email to info at brennans-garage.com. Uh, if you like this kind of stuff, give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to be notified uh, when we do new videos and there's a bell. So thanks again. We'll talk to you later. Bye.